So if you put that, that's great. I like it. If you put that, that's acceptable too. So, okay. And as you can imagine, it'll be something just like that on the test. Um, can, you, can you draw what the graph would look like for the second derivative test now? Oh, from uh, from this right here? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, it's concave down, concave up. And it is uh, 3x e to the negative x. It's a really weird looking one, actually. Let's see, would it be a half or a whole? It's either going to be a half and a half. Or it could be a whole and a whole. Kind of the same with a bed. But increasing exponentially. I think it'll probably be let's see, the other peak. Yeah, I actually did, yeah. I think it'll actually be this one, kind of like a stick with a bed sort of. But it takes off exponentially, so it's a lot more powerful than your typical snake. Yeah, that's interesting. Ooh, the snake is a little bit better. Okay, the snake's what? Oh, it's like really steep. Anyway. Yeah, snakes are very steep, and then of course nobody beats the exponentials. So they're just extremely steep. And become like an exponential snake. It's a special breed. All right. So for number four, for what values of x is this thing concave up? Okay. I spy a keyword. Okay. Very important in the way that you write your answer. I spy another keyword. Who else wants to play I spy? The word something red is concave. If you see, the, yeah, so do I, the ink marks on your next test. Um, oh, okay, I'm just a joke. I mean, so when, when I get a bad grade, it's because. No, that's not why. No, 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 that's not why. No, she's very smart. Okay, all right. Now, uh, here's what you have to do. What you have to do is take two derivatives as soon as you see the word concave, right? Very important. So, let's see if this is handy. 6x to the fifth plus. Oh, no, this didn't cancel like it usually does. It will. 15 over 2. What does Mr. Wade have up his sleeve this time? 60. All right. Sorry, kids. Okay. Let's take another derivative here. Special double derivative marker. Okay. That's going to be 30x to the fourth. See, 4 comes down, and you can cross cancel, right? Yeah. Two times, oh, that sounds better. Oh, Mr. Wade does have something up his sleeve, doesn't he? Oh. And then that's 180x squared. Ah, oh. now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Okay, Easter kids, what should we do? It's passed up. Uh, what should we do next? Okay, set it equal to zero and factor out at 30x squared, right? Okay, so that's going to be x squared plus x minus six. Oh, I see. I trusted that it was handcrafted by Mr. Wade, and he did not let me down. Here we are. Very nice. Plus three, minus two. Mr. Wade must have foiled and done an antiderivative twice. Don't you guys know what antiderivatives are? I can tell you. Behind the scenes. All right. <coughs> and then multiply by some random factor like 30 to make it nicer. Okay, so what we get, we get a Zero. Zero. Negative, three. Negative three. Positive two. So we have three different numbers here to plot our number line. All right, so let's do that. Okay, Easter kids. Uh, well, that kind of ruined the Easter theme now. All right, so F double prime, we're going to plot negative three, zero, and two. Okay? All right, and we're going to plug in some tape. Uh, you know what, the first one is always positive, so you can put plus, 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 or leave it on, right? It's the middle two to change things here. So let's see, let's think like negative 100, and we'll give you a negative, negative, right? Okay. Let's do like a negative 1, negative 2, whatever you want. Uh, that would give you a positive negative. You get over here, you try something like 1. Ooh, the plus minus, that didn't change at all. Oh, uh, that zero came from here, but it was an even power, so it doesn't give you a change. Okay. And then down here, you finally get plus plus. Okay, makes sense. So you get plus, minus, minus plus. All right, interesting. Okay, and now we're looking for where this function would be concave up. Okay, it's concave up where you find the what's. 
So you find your positives. Okay? So it'll be low negative 3 and above, negative, uh, above positive 2. Now you would get a minus 1 if you put this. It is the right place. And really you understand what you're doing if you got this answer. Okay? So it's just a minus 1 because you're just looking for the correct. Okay? But it does say for what values of x. If you want to do for what values of x, not for what intervals, you want to name every number in the world for me that is less than negative 3. That's a lot of numbers. Okay? That's infinite numbers. You'll never get that. Couldn't we just say x is less than negative 3? Covers everything. Or, I should ask you. Or, or yes, instead of union, x is greater than. Okay? And they mean the same thing, but if it says for what values put this, if it says for what intervals put that. Okay? So just try to get the right notation. Again, it's not a big deal. It's a minus one if it's a long notation and you have the right place. But try to read the clues so that you can get as many points as possible. All right, Zach first. Um, could you do like negative three is greater than x, which is greater than two? No. That's a good question, actually. Because it kind of looks like it means the same thing, right? Uh, not exactly. Like that, right? It joins them, and, and the, the, the alligators are going the right way, okay? Right? The alligator was the bigger one. Remember that in elementary school? Unfortunately, what that says is you want to take all numbers that are less than negative 3 and simultaneously greater than 2. It puts them in the same category. And there's nothing less than negative 3 and greater than 2. So all that is between no solution. You just can't do something. Okay? Okay. So there is no number that's between, if that makes sense. sort of the same argument between or and and. Exactly. That's why we can't put and. Right, right. So here's a good, a good rule of thumb to remember. If you have two different plus signs for this answer, write two different groups for your answer. Like that will match the number of groups, right? Okay. Or same with intervals. Two plus signs, two intervals. Don't try to you know, finagle them into one big thing. Okay? And Mallory, you have a question too, right? No, same. same. Okay, same thing. Good, good thinking. Very good. Okay? It looks the same, but it's not the same. Plus so, 10. Okay? Very right. nice. Right. Well done. We need these because other people are thinking, but we need these, you know, talked about in class, so that's good. All right, so that's minus one. That's perfect. Okay. Now, in the next one, it says use the same derivative test, and it says on which intervals, now we're back to intervals again, on which intervals is it concave down? Okay, well, how about all right through here? Yep. Ooh, we have a decision to make. Interesting. To dodge or not to dodge? That is the question. Should we dodge around the zero and write two intervals? Or can we write one blanket interval? Well, there's a moral of the story we talked about in class that day when we did this one. Are any of these from the DVD case? Tangent slope. And I want the normal one. 
Okay. Okay. Opposite okay. reciprocal, yes, because they are perpendicular. Okay. That's negative 12, very steep drop. The other one is a very shallow rise. And the other one is positive. Okay. Remember the uh, perpendicular tangent lines back in uh, geometry, algebra 1, maybe so Okay. So let's use x equals 3, y equals 4, m equals 1, 12. Otherwise, you're going to draw. Okay. <laughs> right. no. Then you plug it in, I'll cut to the chase for you. The B turns out to be 15 fourths, which you can find with a little bit of free algebra. And then you write your line equation, you're done. Okay. So the only way you can miss this on the test is if you forget to do the opposite or something. If you do that, you're set. Okay? Shouldn't be a uh, tricky problem. Okay? Uh, and there is number nine. I think this is a special problem. That's special problem. Yes, it is. All right? Yeah. When you take the derivative, okay, you, got this, you get one-fifth x to the negative four-fifths, right? And when you take the second derivative, I'll tell you very easily that you get four over 25 x to the nine-fifths. Okay? I'll skip the in-between step of scooting the thing downstairs. Anyway, you get two derivatives, you do that, okay? We'll put it in the level. Any, uh, any neutral cases here? Zero. Hmm. Uh, negative four doesn't equal zero, does it? No, there are cases there. What about case two? Any DD cases? You know what? At zero, it doesn't exist. So that means we better test out zero. Okay. All right, let's try some things. Um, I don't know. How about negative 100, positive 100? Any comments about negative 100, fifth root of that? Okay, still negative. And then negative to the ninth, still negative. Negative over negative. Okay, uh, 100. Uh, would that just be positive? Negative over positive. Anyway, we've got a sign change. Unfortunately, it comes from the does not exist case. Oh well, oh, well, I guess it's not an inflection point then. Oh, you'd be wrong. If you take zero and you plug it back into the original function, five cars, it actually works. An inflection point where the double derivative is the end. How about this? Okay. Fast. If I have more time, I can tell you exactly what that happens. Okay. But we'll save it for calculus. Okay. We'll save it for calculus. You got one minute. All right. Minute. Go. Uh, what yeah, do I do here? Two rooms? Yeah. Oh gosh, that's one of the several steps. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Let me just cut to the second derivative because obviously that's pretty easy to do. If you got this as your second derivative, you were correct. And then you factored out a. Well, probably a, uh, an Emily Ross and Taylor 3x, right? Yeah, they're discussing something very important. Oh, really? How are you? Uh, <laughs> x equals zero plus or minus four. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and we'll plot them to make sure oh, we have to do that anyway. Okay. Now I'll tell you right now that you get a minus plus minus plus. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wish. Uh, you wish. Okay. Now it's very easy, of course, to plug in sample points. Same thing we did today. You get those signs, and you're looking for concave down. Intervals. Intervals. Negative infinity to negative four. Union. Union. Zero to ten to negative four. And you're finished, right? Oh, we see that. Yes. Yes. Lunch. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Catchphrase.